After a bank robbery in Edwardsville this afternoon, two suspects are still on the loose, and it's our top story tonight. Good evening, this is WYLN's Late Edition, Greater Hazleton's only local news broadcast for Wednesday, June 11th, 2014. I'm Ann Gownley. Two bank robbers entered the community bank at the West Side Mall in Edwardsville this afternoon and made off with more than $8,000. Police Chief Mike Lehman said a man and woman walked into the bank and handed the teller a note requesting all of the money in the cash drawer. The teller emptied the cash drawer and the two suspects fled on foot towards Med Express Urgent Care Center in the mall. Police converged around 3 p.m. behind Lowe's and Price Chopper at the mall. Police were unable to locate the suspects. The woman is described as five feet to six to eight inches tall with brown hair wearing a blue shirt and dark pants. She was also carrying a tan purse. The male suspect is described as five feet ten inches tall with short brown hair and wearing a white t-shirt and blue shorts. Anyone with information is asked to call Edwardsville Police at 570-288-8463 or dial 911 immediately. Tonight, the 2014 senior class at Hazleton Area High School became alumni. Our Gary Perna takes us to graduation at Hazleton. Over 700 seniors walked across this stage tonight and began a new chapter in their lives. Seniors, tonight we honor you. Tonight we celebrate you. A little fog, a little wind, and a little mist is not keeping us apart. Principal Rocco Patron told the over 1,000 in attendance that he is proud of this class and will miss them. Do not look upon tonight as an ending, but a beginning of a very exciting time. Live your life with passion, honesty, and resiliency. Be courageous, be compassionate, and stay motivated and believe in yourself. I like you. I'm proud of you, and I'm really going to miss you. Superintendent of Schools Dr. Francis Antonelli told the class of 2014 they had a choice to make when leaving this high school. You can follow a script that others have wrote for you and make others happy, or you can write your own story. I'm asking you to write your own story, forge your own path, and our world will be a much better place for it. The 2014 valedictorian, Nicole Barbara, spoke to her fellow classmates about thanking their parents. How are we, as teenagers, able to put into words how grateful we are for our parents, our families, and our guardians who have given us the past 18 years of our life? But then I remembered, we are thanking people who have been there for us since our first breath, our first step, our first day of kindergarten, and the list goes on and on. They have seen us make mistakes and struggle, but still love us for who we are. Class President Dante Tarico and salutatorian Hannah Palazza spoke about reflecting on their past at Hazleton. We realized three extremely important things. This is a time to reflect on the labors of our past, to appreciate the accomplishments of our present, and to understand the possibilities of our future. We reflect on the last four years together and reminisce about the different bonds we formed. It is hard to believe that today is the day that the members of the class of 2014 will throw off their caps and become alumni of the Hazleton Area High School. I can still remember when, four years ago, we all piled into the ninth grade center, a group of strangers, ready to meet our fellow freshmen for the first time. At that point, we had no idea what the next four years would have in store for us or what we would do with the rest of our lives. Those four short years then passed in what seemed like a blink of an eye, and now we all sit here as that sea of red and white like a family. Just days before graduation, senior Kelly Flores died after becoming ill. Tonight, her fellow classmates and the school community took time to remember her. Principal Rocco Patron presented her family with her diploma. Then one by one, the class of 2014 walked across the stage and received their diplomas. Sarah Casatis. Olivia D'Angelo. Jeffrey Payne. Tyler Norris. Then the moment the class of 2014 had been waiting for. 
As superintendent of schools, it gives me great pleasure to stand before you today to certify that the graduating class seated before you has completed requirements prescribed in Chapter 4 regulations as set forth by the Pennsylvania Department of Education as well as the Hazleton Area School District Board of Directors and by policy and power vested in me and granted by the state of Pennsylvania, I declare the class of 2014 official graduates of the Hazleton Area School District. Congratulations. From all of us at WYLN, we'd like to congratulate the class of 2014, and we wish them the best of luck in the future. In Hazel Township, for WYLN's late edition, I'm Gary Perna. In other news today, $3,000 laced with four different kinds of narcotics were found inside a vehicle driving through Beaver Meadows. On May 30th, Beaver Meadows police arrested 27-year-old Luis Alexis Diaz for suspicion of driving under the influence of a controlled substance. When Diaz exited the vehicle, police found $3,000, a small plastic container with marijuana inside, three packages of cigarette rolling papers, five air fresheners, and one bottle of cologne. Diaz failed all three sobriety tests. The $3,000 was ion tested at a lab in Allentown and came back with four different types of drugs on it. The highest amount was at 43% with cocaine. The $3,000 will be forfeited over to the Beaver Meadows Police Department and can only be used towards drug equipment such as cameras. Diaz was released to the custody of his family. The owner of the vehicle who was in the car at the time of the incident while Diaz was driving will be cited for allowing him to operate his vehicle. The other two passengers in the car were not charged. Two people from Hazleton were arrested for selling heroin in the city. Investigators say they caught the pair selling the drug several times. 29-year-old Gerald Van Pinheiro and his girlfriend, 22-year-old Janelle Poremba of Hazleton, were arrested. According to arrest papers, investigators from the Hazleton Narcotics Unit arranged four separate controlled purchases from Pinheiro. Each time he was asked to sell the drug, Poremba delivered it and walked back to the home at the rear of 26 West Diamond Avenue. During during a search of the home, police seized 2.6 grams of heroin, $250 in cash, a box of aluminum foil, a digital scale, and a pre-cut aluminum foil from a bedroom. Both were charged with multiple drug offenses, delivery of a controlled substance, conspiracy and possession of a controlled substance, and related charges. Both are behind bars tonight at the Luzerne County Prison after District Judge Joseph Zola set bail at $50,000 each. A Plymouth man already facing drug delivery charges was arrested again Tuesday after he allegedly sold crack cocaine to a customer. 26-year-old Ishman Bangera of Church Street in Plymouth was scheduled next week for trial in Luzerne County Court on the drug delivery charges. He was released from prison on October of last year after posting $75,000 bail. Police say Bangera was allegedly selling cocaine in the Plymouth area in May and June of 2013. Officers observed Bangera driving dropping a man off in the area of Zerby Avenue. An officer stopped the man who ran into a home on Richard Street. Police say he attempted to flush crack cocaine down the toilet after he said he purchased it from Bangara. Nearly $1,200 was found in Bangara's pocket and another $100 in a glove box. Police also found pills and four white packets of suspected heroin. Bangara was charged with three counts of possession with intent to deliver, two counts of possession among related charges. The other man was not charged. Vangara is behind bars tonight at the Luzerne County Prison. A hit-and-run driver must serve his full sentence for his involvement in the death of a five-year-old boy in Wilkesbury. Judge Joseph Sklarowski denied 24-year-old Thomas Latier's request for a lesser sentence in the hit-and-run death of Kevin Miller on Tuesday. Latier was sentenced in May to serve five to, two to five years in prison. He is currently incarcerated at the State Correctional Institution. Camp Hill in Cumberland County. Latier has 30 days to appeal the judge's denial to the state superior court. A Wilkesbury man was sentenced to 15 months to three years in prison for his sixth drunk driving offense. 49-year-old Byron Shotwell went before senior judge Joseph Algello, who also imposed a $2,500 fine and ordered him to attend alcohol highway safety programs. His latest conviction involved hit-and-run crashes of occupied vehicles in Edwardsville in August of 2013. Court records show that Shotwell also had drunk driving convictions in 1995, 97, 2000. 
2002, 2006, and 2011. Judge Aguela ordered that Shotwell serve two years of probation as a habitable offender after he is released from Luzerne County Prison. A second lawsuit was dismissed against the city of Wilkes-Barre and Mayor Tom Layton in less than a week. Last Thursday, U.S. Judge Malachi Mannion dismissed a suit filed by Tyler and Antonia Hammond. The couple claimed that the city was responsible for destroying their property while it was cleaning up the old River Road bakery site. A Facebook page was recently created parodying Mary, Mayor Tom Layton. Hammond denied his involvement in the creation. He did, however, allege that his right to free speech was violated as a result of retaliation by the mayor. Judge Mannion allowed Hammond's attorney, Cynthia Pollock, to amend the complaint by June 20th. Pollock also stated that she will appeal the first dismissal. An emergency meeting was called by the Luzerne County Transportation Authority last night concerning the criminal charges against its top officials. The authority voted to give Executive Director Stanley Strelish and Operations Manager Rob Allen Henderson unpaid administrative leave. They will be able to use a cured time off while they await trial. The two were charged last week with conspiring to inflate senior citizen ridership numbers in order to receive more than $3 million in grant funding. The board also voted to authorize additional positions to act on behalf of the authority. They did not choose to appoint an interim executive director due to the time constraints. Strelish and Henderson remained free on $25,000 each. Legislation passed today amending legislation that reauthorizes the Customs and Border Protection Agency to require a report of unaccompanied children at the border to include information on the impact of CBP. Barletta stated that in the past few days, thousands of unoccupied uh, unaccompanied children have been coming to the United States and Mexican border. Holding centers have been open to accommodate the influx of children putting pressure on already overworked border patrol agents. Barletta also states that the current administration's immigration policies are, enticing al are enticingly alarming levels of unoccupied unaccompanied alien children to enter the United States illegally. Barletta's amendment expands the required CBP report to include information on Border Patrol resources spent to care for unaccompanied alien children in their custody. It's one of the most wondrous times of the year for school-aged children, the last day of classes. We stopped by West Hazleton Elementary Middle School and spoke with Principal Jocelyn Podlesny, who is already looking forward to the next school year going to uh, provide more and more interventions academically for kids. We're going to uh, teach them on their grade level, expose them to the core curriculum, all that academic vocabulary at their grade level, and then during that intervention time, we're going to meet them where they're at, intensify what we do for them, and bring them to the level where they need to be. Uh, and it's all about the kid here all about the child, all about the students, you know, they come first. Uh, that's so important to us, and the students here are important, and we treat them like our own. And we're really proud of our school, and we're proud as we move to greatness what we continue to become. The staff at West Hazleton strives to make improvements to move towards greatness. Each year, they recognize that they have to make changes to provide high-achieving academics to their students. Uh, our plan is to improve student achievement and that of course is the biggest initiative of our school district. We want to grow our students a year, just a year each year, um, and that's our responsibility as a school. Uh, but along with that, we like to provide a lot of activities, a lot of fun things to do, coupled with the academics, so students develop as all-around individuals. We would like to wish all of the students at West Hazleton and all of the other area schools a safe and healthy summer season. The Hazleton Rotary Club held its weekly meeting at Penn State Hazleton, where they had the opportunity to see what students from Penn State Hazleton and 19 students from Norway created as part of an entrepreneurial class. 25 students split up into five groups have come up with inventions that they believe will one day change the way many do simple tasks. For the past two weeks, 19 students from a university in Norway have been studying at Penn State Hazleton with six students from the campus. Jack St. has been the advisor of the program for the past four years.